Salutations, respected viewers. I'm George from Ireland. This video is about um, Lord Steele of Akewood and his comments on the uh, late Sir Cyril Smith of unhappy and inglorious memory. Well, I better spell out how, who these people are just in case you're unsure. Um, David Steele, he was leader of the Liberal Party for um, uh, ooh, 11 years. I shan't give you a potted history of him. But anyway, the Liberal Party, the, they were the third largest party in the United Kingdom. They later merged with the SDP. They become the Liberal Democrats, which is still going on. So um, uh, David Steele, he was then ennobled as uh, Lord Steele of Ake Wood. Um, probably, probably a real career highlight for him is when he met me in Oxford in 2001, right before the election. And who was Cyril Smith? Well, Cyril Smith was born in about 1928 in um, Rochdale. And um, he never knew who his father was. So that was pretty difficult growing up there. Um, Cyril Smith was um, a, a giant in British politics, in the literal sense. He was about six foot four in both height and breadth. So he was a man of the most formidable proportions. Anyway, um, uh, Cyril Smith, he was in the li Liberal Party just at the end of the Second World War. The Liberal Party did very badly in the 1945 election, reduced to a dozen seats and a middle-aged liberal advised Smith to join the Labour Party, saying, you know, you want a political career, it's got to be either Conservative or Labour, you come from a working-class family, you're just not going to have a political career, as in the Conservative Party, if you're a proletarian, join Labour. Labour's quite strong on Rochdale. So that's what Smith did, um, and uh, he was a distinguished councillor there. And then he, then he defected to the Liberals, and he was elected for Rochdale, his local town as a Liberal, an area the United Kingdom, where the Liberals were very feeble, but he had a strong personal following, and he stayed on as an MP to 1992. But in the late 60s, uh, when he was still a Labour councillor, um, rumours emerged that he'd been going to this um, uh, orphanage and sexually abusing boys. Uh, now, the age of consent after 1967, the gay age of consent, was 21 in the United Kingdom. It's now 16. But um, the boys who were molesting really were boys, were, even by today's standards, below 16, allegedly well below 16. Sorry, I should point out he allegedly molested them. I don't actually know, but it seems probable that he did do this. And there was this um, underground magazine called the Rochdale Free Press, which published these rumours about Smith. Um, and he very much discouraged that. I don't know why he didn't sue for libel. But the, the mainstream media, Fleet Street, did not pick it up. Libel laws are very strong. You know, in fairness, uh, Cyril Smith was never convicted of anything, was never even charged with anything. That's that he died an innocent man in the eyes of the law. Um, so what he was doing was, well, sorry, if he was doing it, I've got to give him the presumption of innocence, was, was really vile. Um, uh, it wasn't the milder sort of abuse, it was the worst sort of abuse, apparently. And as I say, they weren't like a shade below the age of consent a few months where you, people would say, mm, maybe grey area, well below the age of consent. And there's obviously the huge power disparity, him being a middle-aged man and uh, the MP for the town in time, a very uh, exalted local figure, and then these helpless orphans, nobody's going to advocate for them. Um, so then he was uh, elected to Parliament in 1972, as a Liberal, as I say, and uh, he was aware of the um, BBC sniffing around this. So he sent them a handoff letter saying that I've heard you're prying into the private lives of various members of Parliament and uh, discouraging them, threatening them, and, and they backed off. Now, in the 70s, they wouldn't, have, they wouldn't have broadcast anything about this because they would have been um, open to being sued for libel. Because remember, it's up to the, the person who makes the statement to prove it's true. If we're not sure, then that means the claimant, Smith in this case, would win. Um, so uh, David Steele was leader of the Liberal Party after 1977. Um, of course, there was that um, terrible scandal for him where Jeremy Thorpe, the former leader, was indicted for um, allegedly conspiring to murder his ex-lover, gay lover. Um, so there was, a, there was enough bad press for the Liberals at the time. So uh, Steele was said he was um, uh, cognizant of these accusations against Smith, and Smith indeed was spoken to by the police about it, who decided there was no case to answer, was never charged with anything, and I believe he was interviewed voluntarily. He was not arrested. The police say, we would like to quiz you about something. Would you please attend the station? And Smith chose to do so. Had he not chosen to do so, did they have grounds for arrest? It's dubious in those days. It was a very different era, a very deferential era, in which there was... Um, the argument from authority, you can't accuse me because I'm a very respected local figure. So the, um, the weaker person in those days very rarely accused the more powerful one. 
as in people didn't accuse police officers, teachers, parents, priests, politicians, judges. Someone in position of authority would, would very seldom be accused, no matter how strong the evidence, because you can't say that about whoever. This person's a very um, respected uh, man in the area, and that's that. And the, also the attitude is, the institution must, be not left, must not be left with egg on its face. The church, or the police force, or the ju judiciary, or the medical profession, or whoever it was, they must not be embarrassed. That would besmirch their reputation in the eyes of the public. So um, that's why there was always a tendency to cover up, just bury it, just forget it. And also you might be in trouble for bad-mouthing the institution or this uh, very uh, revered local figure. So um, Steele said he spoke to uh, Cyril Smith about this and he came away with the impression that Smith had actually done it, had committed crimes of this nature. Um, and Steele's just come out and said that recently. It's been known for a few years that Steele was aware of um, rumours swirling around about Cyril Smith. But as, as uh, uh, Lord Steele said at the time, I was not running a detective agency, I was running a political party. What was I supposed to do? Arrest him? I can't arrest him, I've got no powers of arrest. Citizens of arrest. The police spoke to him, they decided that um, there were no grounds to charge him with any crime. That was that. Um, and obviously Steele has the deeply unfashionable view that people should be presumed to be innocent. And no, you cannot expel someone from a political party on the basis of an unproven allegation. A lot of mud is slung in politics. People are accused of this and that. If we were to do that, then nobody would be allowed in politics because everybody gets accused of something. Um, so um, Cyril Smith carried on his career in politics. Um, the other highly tendentious thing about him is, is he was constantly arguing that um, asbestos was not bad for people's health. We know now that it causes cancer. I think he received some donations from an asbestos manufacturing company. And um, when he was about to stand down from Parliament, um, Steele recommended that, that Cyril Smith be knighted, and indeed he was, became Sir Cyril Smith. He died of cancer in 2010. And it's after he died, all this came out in the wash. Um, beware only those who breathe, because you cannot sue for libel as the estate of whoever. After someone is dead, people can say whatever they want about this person and it cannot be sued for libel. Um, so although Cyril Smith's family find this distressing, there is nothing they can legally do about it. Um, so, uh, you know, is proved to the criminal standard? Well, no, it's never had its day in court, blah, blah, blah. And Steele said he'd speak, spoken to a criminal barrister about this. And the barrister said, uh, you know, the, the allegations here is not something I could successfully uh, prosecute um, back, back then. Uh, anything else about um, about Sir Cyril Smith and, and that? Because he was never known to have any relationship with an adult, with a man, with a woman. I've never heard of that, a romantic one or simply physical encounters. So perhaps his uh, predilections lay elsewhere. The other thing is, obviously, some people are just asexual. Just because someone doesn't have intimate liaisons with adults doesn't, doesn't mean they abuse children. But um, in his case, there's a fairly high chance that he did. So um, the Liberal Democrats are um, up in arms about this. Steele, you um, uh, had a fairly good idea that Cyril Smith was, had done this sort of stuff and you took no action. But Steele said, there was no action I could have taken. I mean, a disciplinary panel in the party. Well, we don't actually, can't, can't put people on trial, like have a criminal trial in our political party. So no, we don't do anything. Um, so just for PR reasons, they might, they might try and skewer him. Uh, so he's got in trouble for not having taken firm action in, in the 70s when he was aware of this, but of course there was nothing he could actually done.